Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Digging Deeper Moment number 83. The mission of our Digging Deeper Moments is to take God's Word to God's world. We are so glad that you joined us. In Genesis chapters, chapters 1 and 2, the Bible tells us that God created the heavens and the earth and that He made Adam and Eve in His image and likeness so that they could be His sons and daughters who extend His rulership in the earth. Genesis chapter 3 tells us that Adam and Eve rebelled against God when they disobeyed the one commandment God gave them in the garden. Immediately after that, in Genesis chapters 4 through 6, we see that humanity quickly falls into immorality, violence, and oppression. So much so that in Genesis chapter 6, God has no other alternative but to destroy the world and begin again. And so last week we saw that Noah was like a second Adam, called to fulfill the commission given to Adam and Eve originally, but they failed at, and he was called, just like Adam and Eve, to multiply, fill the earth, and extend God's rule. This brings us to Genesis chapter 9, where we see that Noah, after the flood, got drunk and lay naked in his tent. We pick up the story in Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank the wine and was drunk, and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took, took a garment, laid it on their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. Now, scholars debate what actually happened here. Some scholars believe that Ham, that all that Ham did was fail to protect his father's dignity and went outside and mocked him. Others believe that Ham did much more, but the text doesn't tell us that, so we're kind of left not knowing for sure. But one thing we can be sure of is why Moses included this story in the first place. And it's to show that though the old world of wickedness and sin had been destroyed by the flood, sin had survived the boat ride. By the time we get to Genesis chapter 11, humanity is an outright rebellion again against God. Now, before we go into the story any further, we have to recognize that the events of chapter 10 in Genesis actually take place after the events of chapter 11. Let me say that again. And this happens a lot in the Bible because they write thematically in the Bible. They don't write chronologically. They don't write A, B, C, or 1, 2, 3. They write according to their theme. And so in Genesis 10, what happens in Genesis 10 actually takes place after Genesis chapter 11. And what's in Genesis chapter 10 is called the table of nations, and it records where people went after God scattered them on the earth after the Tower of Babel incident found in Genesis chapter 11. And so the order of events is as follows. Noah survives the flood by building an ark. That's in Genesis 6 through chapter 9. After the flood, Noah got drunk and his son Ham mocks him. Genesis 9 verses 20 through 29. Then the story of the Tower of Babel found in Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 through 9. And then comes the table of nations, Genesis 10 or Genesis 10. Now, we're going to pick the story up in Genesis 10, verse 32. These were the families of the sons of Noah, according to their generations, in their nations, and from these the nations were divided on the earth after the flood. Chapter 11, verse 1. Now, the whole earth had one language, language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make brick and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the whole face of the earth. Now the last thing we saw at the end of chapter 9 is that Noah got drunk, but that's not the last thing that happened chronologically. The last thing that happened chronologically is not the story about Noah getting drunk. It's about what happened after the sons of Noah began to populate the earth. It says in Genesis 9, 19, it says, These were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. Then we have to skip the story about Noah's, Noah getting drunk. And then we come to chapter 10, verse 32, which says, from these, nation, from these the nations were divided on the earth after the flood. This tells us that after Noah's sons left the ark, that they began to spread out in the earth. That just makes sense. In fact, Genesis 8, chapter 8, verse 4 tells us that their starting point, it tells us our, their starting point was Mount Ararat. After the ark rode up on the waters, the Bible says it rested on the mountains of Ararat. Now, this area, the mountains of Ararat, lie somewhere between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, as shown here on this map. But you have to understand, from there, the descendants of Noah traveled south 
and eastward, and they came to the plain of Shinar, which is also Babylonia, uh, which is also located called Mesopotamia. And it's the land between two rivers. It's literally the land between the Tigris and the Euphrates. Now, at this time, Genesis 11, 1 tells us that the languages had not yet been divided, nor the nations had been divided, and that they all spoke one language. In Genesis chapter 11, verse 2, the Bible tells us they traveled east or from the east. Now, this is significant because in the book of Genesis, an eastwardly direction is always not a good thing. <laughs> Whenever you see them going east, something bad is about to happen. You see it at the expulsion of Adam and Eve. You know, when they sinned in the garden, God placed cherubim at the entryway to the garden facing eastward. This means that the only way Adam and Eve could travel was, was an easterly direction. To get to the presence of God, they had to go west. And that's how the temples were set up. In order to go into the temples, you had to go west. And so, leaving the temple, you went east. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 16, it tells us that when Cain sinned by killing his brother Abel, that he went out from the presence of the Lord and lived in Nod, east of the Garden of Eden. He's going east. He's going away from the presence of the Lord. Genesis chapter 13, 11 tells us again that Lot, this is the, the nephew of Abraham, the patriarch, that he journeyed eastward from where Abraham was, and then in Genesis 25, 6, the Bible tells us again that Abraham's sons by Keturah, his last wife, were dispersed to the land of the east. This detached them from the elect son of Isaac. We also find that Jacob, the son of Isaac, fled his homeland to live among the eastern peoples of Aram. So going east in Genesis is a harbinger of bad things to come. It's a picture of moving away from God's presence and His place of blessing. And so what do we find next after it says they went from the east or traveled east? We next find the people in the, in the land of the Mesopotamia in the plain of Shinar, and they decide to stop there, dwell there, and build a city in defiance to God's command to Noah. Because the last thing God had commanded humanity was in Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, when God said, God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. This means that like Adam and Eve, who defied God's commandment in the Garden of Eden, the descendants of Noah are now outwardly defying God's command as well. I mean, this is actually not just an individual decision. This is a collective decision. Whatever, however large society was at this time, they are collectively deciding to defy God's purpose of extending His rule in the earth and filling the earth. We see this in Genesis 11, verses 3 through 4, when it says, Then they said to one another, Come, you know, I can almost picture this. So, hey, guy, hey, guys, let's go build a city. Come, let us make brick and let's bake them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone. They had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. Lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. This means that they're outright defying God's plan to go and fill the earth. Now, because they were on the plain of Sharnar, they didn't have stone to build with, so they made bricks out of clay. You know, they've been doing that for the last 4,000 years. They're still making bricks out of clay in this part of the world. And so they built themselves a city and a tower. Now, they weren't building this city to live in. The city and the tower together were what's called a temple city. The tower was something called a ziggurat. What we know about ancient cities is that when they weren't built for the common people to live in, they were actually public facilities, that cities were built to be connected to the ziggurat. They were to serve the needs of the temple. So the city was, in effect, a temple complex. And so what is really happening here in Genesis 11 is that the descendants of Noah are building a pagan temple. And that's where we're going to have to pick it up next week. If this lesson helped you, please share it with a friend, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I hope to see you next week. God bless.